Well, hey there, it's your old pal Keith, and I'm going to make sure I'm wearing my microphone, which of course I'm not. Hey, it's your old pal Keith from groups.com, who's now wearing his microphone. And uh, we're still on floppy. We're still like learning about floppy and all the nifty things that it can do. Um, and so we are getting to the point where we're going to talk about um, some of the cool features like the list math action. List math is very neat. It's basically an iteration technique, um, but it's just a single action. Uh, we're going to talk about, because we haven't talked about this before, uh, Floppy's RAM list. We, we talked about adding things and setting things to Floppy's RAM list, but I don't think I showed anywhere where I actually changed an item in the RAM list. And that's like, I guess you, it's kind of a breakthrough, right? Because you can't actually change an item in a list in Vanilla Bubble, which is really stupid. Because uh, at the end of the day, a, a list is just an array. And like, why can't I, you know, randomly, I can randomly read a value from a list, right? I, the list's index number n, right? The first item in the list is index one. Um, but if I want to like specifically set the value of index one or more complex, set the value of index five, um, it can't be done uh, in a very straightforward manner. Um, and then maybe we'll get to a couple of bonus beats. Um, the thing that, um, inspired me here to do some of these features in Floppy is this, this problem that, that, that people always have with repeating groups, right? Um, so I have a comment to myself here, make comments on repeating groups and whine about objects and things. Okay, I will do that. Um, one mistake that folks, um, bubblers commonly make with, why is my cursor in my nose? What is going on? Um, one mistake that bubblers make with repeating groups is that they think they're computation devices. And in a sense, they are. But the computations that happen in the cells of a repeating group, we don't have a handle to. Like, we don't have we don't, we can't see those. And so, you know, other plugin devs, um, they have, you know, attempt to solve this problem and they do practically speaking, solve this problem. Um, but they do it ass backward. They're like, oh, well, I could reach into the repeating group and I could, and I could essentially like pull these, these values out. Um, but you know, they're just reading like from the DOM, like from the web page, And the, the real approach to fixing this problem is to not do your computations in the repeating group. Do them somewhere else where you have, like where you have access to them and then display them in the repeating group. So the repeating group is a way of visualizing lists. And we can also visualize lists like just in like a, a humble text element. And it, it's the same idea. Um, but basically it's like, if you were writing something in JavaScript, um, you wouldn't, you're, it's not the repeater that would be doing the, the math, really. It's more like you would do the math, and then you display the results of the math in the repeater. Now, I know some smarty pants people are going to say, well, reactive programming. Yeah, in reactive programming, actually, that might be a, that might be a little different. And it's it kind of like realizes the vision of what people want to do in bubble, I guess, in a certain sense. Um, but I'm not going to talk about them more here. Um, okay, so... I'm not going to do like building a store. Okay. Um, I have done another video that's like a, a real Keith classic um, that if you want like a little more commentary on this kind of ideas and, and like where I actually kind of have a thing that like really looks like a store and I show you how you would build up these parallel lists of things and then send them to the back end to do your, your processing on them. Um, what to find that video just, just, um, in the forum search for, I made a thing for you and you'll get to this video where, um, inspired by a uh, zealous pudding, who is a very thoughtful, um, bubbler who maybe is still around. I'm not sure. I can't remember the last time I saw zealous, maybe, maybe, maybe even just today. I don't know. Um, but you'll find this video and it's, it's, it's cheeky and, and fun and, and actually very informative. Uh, so. I'm not going to uh, recap a whole bunch of that stuff, but I have made 
to demonstrate some of these features in Floppy. Um, kind of a simulated store. This is maybe kind of like an order form. So like what I've done is I've taken my favorite things, which are not like products, they don't have images, but they do have a value on them, right? So this is like kind of in our previous floppy examples. Um, I'm just, I, what I'm doing is I'm doing a search for, uh, I think this is the first 10 items. It looks like about 10 to me. We could, we could count them, I guess. Oh, there's indexes. Let's just check. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just getting like the 10 most recently created favorite things from my database and I'm displaying them in a repeating group and a little bit like a store, right? I've got a, I've got a little quantity field here and, um, I didn't do inputs or anything. I just did some little, the up and down arrows, which I obviously I leveraged from my previous videos about floppy. Um, and when you click these here, I'm going to make my head smaller. There we go. Um, when I, when I click these, it like updates the quantity and you'll see that a subtotal updates as well. Um, but what's going on behind the scenes here. And also if you look over here, you'll see that these are the same values are over here in the text element. And so clearly what I'm doing is I am actually doing these computations outside of the repeating group and then displaying the results inside the repeating group. Interesting, no? Um, so let's see, I'm going to regroup a little bit. Um, this is also not creating new bubble things. Um, you know, if we were to think about a, a store, like a cart that, you know, is part of a store, like a cart, um, is really a way of creating an order, right? And so if we thought conceptually about what an order is, like you'd have an order, an order is composed of line items. If we're talking kind of in thing terms or object terms, um, a line item would have a product and then a quantity at a minimum. It might also have, it might have a product, a quantity, and a price. It might additionally have a product, a quantity, a price, and a subtotal, depending upon when we wanted to compute those values. And so in, you go to the, the video I just referenced a couple minutes ago, and I'll talk about this, like what, you know, the creation of like a line item, uh, and, and what that entails. And I, I show like doing it quote unquote, the bubble way, the way bubble would expect us to do it, which is like, as we built this, like this thing right here, this repeating group, like in, in the, the vanilla bubble way of doing things, the, these would be a, a thing called a line item. And we would be creating them and modifying them, you know, via interaction with the database. What this little page is doing is just doing it in the page. And it's, we have just a, an artificial list of, of favorite things, which I'm treating as products in this case. We also have a list of quantities that corresponds to the list of products. And then we're doing some math to compute the subtotals. Okay. I'm going to take the, a little pause and continue. I realized that, um, I forgot to whinge about objects, but, and things, but we'll, we'll, there'll probably be some whinging in here. Um, eventually you can almost uh, be sure of it on oh, my computer's really loud. I'm sorry. If you're hearing fan noise, it's just my computer going into super ultra turbo mode. Um, uh, let's see, let's, maybe we should look at how this is built. A, eh? um, all right. I'm going to go into edit mode. And so you'll see that, um, very similar to my previous docs and tutorials about floppy, um, with these favorite things, I've got a repeating group here. It's type is set to favorite thing and his data source is floppy master favorite things, Ram list values. This is the, the, the Ram list that's in floppy master, uh, is kind of stand. It's a proxy. It's like standing in for like a, a list of, of products. Okay. It has a list of favorite things in it. And what we're doing, let's just see here. 
So when floppy master favorite things is initialized, we are just setting the RAM list value for that floppy to be search for favorite things items until 10. Okay. Um, so you can kind of think of this as, um, you know, I just automatically created like a, a cart that's full of items, but they're just, they're just sort of random. They're arbitrary. I didn't, I didn't assemble it. I just like pulled some favorite things out of my database. Okay. And it only does this if that floppy, this, this floppy, which in this context is a uh, floppy master favorite things. It only does that if it's, um, if it's stored value is greater than one. Um, because of course what I'm also doing is in this scenario, I'm also writing these values to local storage, not really local storage, but index DB. Um, okay. So that's where that list of products is coming from. And so, you know, this is kind of like, I guess, you know, what we're seeing here, it's kind of like a Girl Scout cookie, uh, order form, right? It's like, okay, here's all my cookies. And do you want any of these? You know, do I want some, do I want some peanut butter sandies or some, you know, mint chip hoholos or whatever they are. Um, right. So it's kind of like that. So it's not really, it's not really a cart, but it's, it's like an order form and you can, you can see how that's the equivalent of like products in a cart. Okay. Now when the page initializes, I don't think these will be stored. Will they? Yeah. These are not, these are not stored yet. Uh, which is good because I wanted it to be this way. So when this page initializes, right, I've got zero quantity of anything. Okay. And like I showed you before, if I increase the quantity on something, right, like this is, this is the first, this is the first Girl Scout cookie, the first favorite thing in our list. When I hit its up arrow, I can increase the quantity that I'm buying. And these are very expensive Girl Scout cookies. They're, they're, they're 200 shekels a piece. Um, they're just that good because they're made of rich Corinthian leather, you see. And you, you will note that as I do this, the quantity updates here. Um, and then also I, I have a list of, of values just in a text element over here. These are, these are also increasing. So you'll see that when I click the up arrow on hot sauce, see the second quantity in this list of quantities increased. And so what I have, what's doing that is a, a floppy element that I've called floppy quantities, and we're updating its RAM list. And let me show you how that works. So let's go back over into our design mode and let's pick on this, this up arrow icon. I hate when you double click like an icon, it opens the icon flyout over here. That's basically a bug. Um, let's start edit workflow. And so you see when the up chevron is clicked, what am I doing? How am I registering that change in quantities? Well, what I'm doing is I'm doing change RAM list values. It, the, the value has an apostrophe S because we can change one or we can change multiple values in a RAM list um, for this floppy called floppy quantities. Going back into design mode, this is floppy quantities. This is floppy master favorite things. So again, this is kind of my order form, and this is the quantities that I'm recording in the order form. Okay. So we'll go back over into the workflow and let's look at this action. So we haven't, we haven't shown change RAM list values. I don't think, um, there's a lot of different options here. Um, again, everything is, is well documented. Um, you, you can change an item by its position, which is typically what we're, we would use this action for, although you can change items, um, by their value, meaning that we hunt for them first. And we, you know, so we say the scenario would be like, you have a thing and you want to like, it's like, okay, the thing that's apple now make it banana. Okay. They're like two different things. So what we might do in that context is, is we would use the change items by value, which is the second section down here. But in this case, I'm working with this repeating group. And so I'm just going to change an item by a single index. I'm going to change essentially one item, uh, that's at this particular index to some other value. Okay. And so what happens is again, 
I talked a lot. So when I click this button, we're going to execute this workflow, which has this ugly name. I should have given it a better name. But basically, when the Chevron up is clicked, I'm going to change RAM list values of floppy quantities. Okay. And so um, floppy quantities, of course, would be set up to hold numbers. All right. And floppy master is set up to hold things, my favorite things. Okay. So that's in the main configuration. Maybe we'll show that. Um, but just, you know, you know that the, you know that floppy's RAM list is of the same type as the floppy supports, right? That type controls the RAM scaler, the RAM list values. It controls the, uh, the key that we can write to in local storage, and it controls the list key that we can write to in local storage. Uh, I should have just said storage there. So anyway, when we click the up chevron, we're going to change a single index, and that is current cells index, okay? And we're going to change it to specify new values here. We're going to change that single value to be floppy quantities, RAM list values, item number, current cells index, plus one. Now, note, it's kind of important that I have parens turned on here, because I'm not sure that this will work properly if, you're not, if you don't have parens activated. Because I think what happens if you don't is that you'll just be incrementing current cells index and not saying, well, take the value that's at this position and add one to it, right? And then similarly, when we click the down icon, we are changing the ra a single RAM list value for floppy quantities, okay? We're changing the, the item at the current cells index. In this case, we're changing it to be floppy quantities, RAM list values, item number, current cells index, minus one, okay? So, oop doop we'll refresh because I touched some things, and so now Global thinks I need to refresh. All right. And so you'll see, like, if I go to, so this is item one, here's the indexes, item one, item two, item three. If I click the up arrow for item three, this is going to, this says, take item three and add one to it. And then Floppy publishes that list, right? And so you see, I click that, and now at one, two, three, I have the value of one. So I want one set of canary wings for the bargain price of $88. Uh, if I click it again, now I want two canary wings um, at the bargain price of $176. All right, cool, right? Um, so how is this list that's that's in floppy quantities RAM list, how is that how is that getting back into the repeating group? So that's being done like so. Here's our repeating group, okay? This repeating group is a list of favorite things. But then over here, if we examine this text element, okay, the one that's for quantities, the Q colon means quantities, we're just retrieving floppy quantities RAM list values, item number, current cells index, right? So this one would be the first index in the, the quantities RAM list, okay? And like this one would be the second, this one would be the third, this would be the fourth. And so we're, we're doing this differently than, you know, Bubble would lead you to believe if you're just playing with repeating groups, right? Um, does that make sense to you? It will. So let's look at the subtotal field. So in the subtotal field, it's the same thing. Now, um, we're, we're getting floppy master favorite things, utility. We'll, we'll look at this in a second. We're actually computing this subtotal using the list math action. And the list math action in floppy um, basically lets you run a computation on a list of numbers and then send that to one of five different outputs in the floppy plugin. So you can you can use the same action and like store results in different fields, different outputs of floppy. So I will show this in a second. But what we're doing is we're just grabbing it's we have a list of numbers that represent the subtotals and we're just grabbing the nth item from the list, right? So it's floppy master favorite things utility miss, list math result one item number current sales index. So that is it's the first thing in that list math result. This is the second thing in the list math result. This is the third thing in the list math result. 
if I were, you know, if I were like a naive bubbler, I would maybe be computing the subtotal like this, right? I would say like subtotal is, and I've kind of broken, the, you know, all right, we would have a, let's say there's an input here. Let's do this, make this real obvious. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Move our subtotal over here so we can have a, let's say I had an input in this cell. Input. I have to be mindful of the time. I have an appointment, so I may have to continue this later. I want to input. What did I do? Input. I'll put an input. And this will be like input quantities, okay? It's, I know this is ugly. Quantity. Quantity. Uh, its content is an integer. All right. And so what we could do is so here's the naive way. Naive. Naive subtotal. That's I didn't spell naive right. Oh, it won't let me. You know what I mean. I'm not going to spell it right. Uh, okay. So the, the naive subtotal would be like input input quantities value times current cell's favorite things value which is its price right we'll go back over to our preview so you can see what i'm talking about and it's going to look this is going to look really fugly sorry but whatever okay so like, now I've got a quantities input in here and I say, oh, I want four of these things, right? And so now I have this, I have this naive subtotal, right? I have 800 bucks. I'm like, okay, the user wants four rich Corinthian leathers and the, the total price is going to be like 800 bucks, smackeroonies, the shekels, credits, whatever, galactic Instacart dollars, right? But I don't have, it doesn't exist outside of this repeating group, you know. So you're like, you thought you computed a subtotal. But all you did was like just display the result of this math in the DOM, you know. Like if we go, if we go to elements and we like inspect this, like what even is it? Subtotal. See, it's just like a text. See, naive subtotal, 800. It's just a value that's like literally written into the DOM. Like, I, I, I don't have access to that. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, these plugins that, like, reach into the repeating group and, like, grab the grab the text out of there are fairly silly. It's just, it's the backward way to do it. Okay, pause. So that was kind of dumb, and it's a non-starter, so I just undid the change, right? So the question that you have at this point, right, is where does this list come from? Where, where does this utility list math result one come from? Okay. Um, let's go into our workflow. It's been a minute since I, I built this little demonstration, so I don't I don't even know. But it probably happens when floppy quantities is updated. Let's see here. That was that's the initialized for floppy quantities. Let's look at not that one. We'll we'll talk about that too. We we're adding some empty values to a list with this guy. Here we go. Okay. So um, when a RAM list is updated, we throw an event in Floppy. And this event is called updated RAM list values. And so when we click the up and down chevrons, we're actually causing, because we're updating Floppy's RAM list, okay, we're causing this event called updated RAM list values to be thrown. And it's thrown for Floppy quantities. So what I do here is I have a workflow that says when floppy quantities, it's the blue one, right? When floppy quantities updated RAM list values, I'm, I run this really nifty action called utility list math. And so you will find it, like if we were to insert an action here, we could do floppy and we could see everything. We could see all of our actions, right? And there's lots of them. It's this, oh, it's not that one. It's utility list math. So we could also get there easily by saying utility, utility list math of floppy. 
All right. Now, what list math does is it says for a certain floppy, and we're going to use floppy master favorite things for this. Um, and uh, the interface is a little ugly because I, I think I have some additional documentation to add here. So you see this field that just says LM info two. It just means list math info two. And I probably want to write it another paragraph there. And then I have this thing that says op info two, which I mean to say something about the operators that are below here. But what list math does is it does math on every element of a list or math on two different lists to the corresponding elements. In this case, what I'm what I just want to do is I for list one, I'm saying take floppy master's favorite things RAM list, each item's value, and multiply that value by the corresponding quantity in floppy quantities RAM list values. Okay? If we have two lists for an operation, it means that we're taking item one from list one, which in this case is the 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 the, the price of the favorite thing and multiply it by the corresponding value, in this case, you know, one, two, three, four, multiply it by the corresponding value in some other list, okay? And I've defined all of the, all of the same functions that Bubble has. There are other ones that I could add here, but at the present time, you can, you can add these items, you could subtract, you could multiply, you can divide, you can do a power of, um, you can do rounded to floor, ceiling, maximum, modulo. And as far as I can tell, the way I've implemented those algorithms is, is the same way that, that Bubble does. So they'll give the same results that you would get, uh, you know, just like if you were doing math on, on any other input, like a scalar input. But in this case, we can do math on lists. Okay, so I, I take every item in the RAM list values for Floppy Master and multiply it by the quantities from the RAM list in floppy quantities, okay? And that's it. And then there's one other option here um, in the output options. You select where you want that resulting list of numbers to go. And I've given you five outputs here. The default is list math result one. And so that's where we're gonna send it. Uh, then I guess additionally, when I do this, I will also trigger a custom event called store cart values and so let's see, this is store cart values. It looks like what we do here is we store the, let's see, we store the RAM list. Ah, we take the RAM list and we store it in the list key for floppy master. And we take the RAM list for floppy quantities and we store it to the uh, list key for floppy quantities and thereby write our order to the database. Does that actually happen? I don't know. The math part definitely happens. We'll go back over to preview. And I want to look at, oops. Oh no. What I want to look at is my application. Oh yeah, I guess we do have cart items. Oh, and there's that bug again. There's that bug with um with um like fool icons or whatever the hell it's called. I had I had the name of it before. Um, all right. So Let's see here. All right, we're back to all zeros. It's weird because I thought they were saved. So let's see, we'll incre increment the quantities on hot sauce. You'll see that my subtotal changes here. Um, let's see, what's in here? What's in these values? What's in these stored values? So the cart items, it's a it's an array 10. Why won't it show these to me? Oh, there you go, there's like my 10 things. Ah, okay. And here's my cart quantities. You see that, oh, I have four hot sauces. And so I have four hot sauces stored over here in position one. Okay. And you'll note that like indexes, actually indexes in index DB, like start at, uh, they're like JavaScript style in this case. I guess this isn't really because they're index DB. Never mind. I was going to make some comment there, but you don't even need to worry about that. But you'll see that we did write those. And so if we do this, do we get like another subtotal? Seems like we're not actually triggering that quite right. Oh no, we are because we have to hit refresh to see it. There we go. So I've got four of this thing and six of this thing. And we're actually storing that over in 
not really local storage, but indexed DB. Okay, that's pretty nifty. It does not matter, by the way, that I was storing those values there. I'm, I'm literally just reading them out of RAM, but I'm I'm storing them like for later in case, like, say I abandon my order and then the user comes back to the page. Now, the funny thing is, is when I do this, I feel like when I hit refresh, I think I intended for like those existing values to be read back in. I might have changed my logic, yeah. So it looks like looks like we're not reading them back in. So let's we should fix that maybe, eh? So let's see. What we want to do is where do we set floppy quantities? Floppy quantities initialized. It's not on the initialized state. Oh, it's when the master favorite things list becomes initialized. And let's see, floppy master favorite things RAM list values is greater than zero, meaning that it has actually put some values in the RAM list. And floppy quantities initialized is yes. Okay. I guess I meant to have a additional thing here. What I want to say is and floppy quantities. I'm going to look at storage. And so I'm going to say floppy quantities list values in storage um, is not empty. Is really count greater than zero. No, I want it when it is empty. Sorry, count less than one. And let's see, is that a nice thing that I want? But in which case, in which case, oh, I know what I meant to do. I know what I meant to do. What I want to do. Is I, is I want to add an only when here, because what happens here is like when the, the floppies become initialized, um, if there's no values in storage, what I do is I just like shove a bunch of zeros into the quantities RAM list. We just assume you don't have an order. So what I really want to do is you know, just being kind of a, a ding dong, being kind of a ding dong. What I want to do is remove this and. There we go. Did that do it for me? Nope, still left the and. Initialized is yes, and that expression there. Okay, so if that's all true, if this is the situation, then I want to add empty values, and I want to add the same number of empty values as master favorite things RAM list values count. So it's like, take the number of things that are in our order form and just set all the quantities to zero is what this does. Um, but we only want to do that if, if floppy, floppy quantities, if floppy quantities list values storage count is zero or is less than one, is less than. I hate that. This is scrolling off the page. Count is. What? Why can't I do that? Now I'm just, I'm thrashing a little bit here. Hold on. Let's clear that. Only when floppy storage, floppy, sorry, floppy quantities, list values storage count. Ah, there it is. I don't know what I was doing wrong before. Count is less than one. Okay, so if floppy quantities list of values storage, the, the stored values is empty, then we want to do this, populate with zeros. But if it is, we want to set the RAM list. So if it has values, we'll do um, set ram list value a floppy the floppy in question is floppy quantities we want to set the ram list value to be the value from storage now you know it seems funny that i don't have an action that just takes storage and sets it to the ram list i bet i do storage mm, let's see floppy i'm just going to research that real quick floppy let's see here set 
Is that really the way I did this? Store RAM list to list key. Okay, so you can take the RAM list and you can shove it in the list key. Um, I guess you can't take the... That would be nice if I added that. I mean, you, you can do this, but... What I probably meant to do was actually have a little action that say, take storage and shove it in the RAM list. But this is, this is how I did it. So we'll take the RAM we'll take the value from storage and we'll shove it into the RAM list. Okay. So this will be floppy. I guess we could say, can we say this? Nope. We can't say this floppy. Oh, because the this comes from the when expression up here. So that doesn't work. Uh, so we say floppy quantities. Sorry, I'm just doing, I'm doing a lot of talking and I might be confusing you. Uh, we're going to look at floppy quantities, list values from storage. We're going to take the values from storage and we'll shove them into its RAM list. I think this will work now. Let's look at this page. Let's go back over here. What's in our storage? Yeah, we have a, we have storage in cart and we have cart items and cart quantities. Oh, but they're all null. Okay, that's fine. We'll just reload our page. We're going to have to do two reloads to test this, right? There's that stupid bug. Oh, car alarm. That's nice. All right, here we go. Let's add some rich Corinthian leather and some hot sauce to our cart. And let's see here. Cart. Yeah, now we have some values in our cart. All right, let's reload the page. Do they, do they come back to us? Do the quantities come back? They should. Unless I've made another, like, bump. Oh! Look at that. Uh, but there's that stupid bug with the, what is that, Font Awesome? Why does Font Awesome, like, not load for me, like, half the time? It's not my plugin. It's like a core feature of Bubble. What is going on with that? Okay, so now you see, right, so these things were in storage, so we retrieved, actually, the, the quantity values that we had sent, and we recomputed the subtotals. You know, this is just, we don't really need to save the subtotals, because this is just a derived value. We can always get back to this list of what the subtotals are by any time that the quantities list changes. We just run the list math on it. So that's pretty cool, right? So I, I wanted to keep this short, um, short-ish, but that's an introduction to list math and some commentary on the right way to compute values to display in a repeating group. Um, for more on this, you know, do go and watch this original video. Um, now, where in that original video, actually, I do it with List Shifter. And it's a little, you'll, you'll see that it's a little more cumbersome to actually, like, we don't have random write access in List Shifter to elements in a list. And that's, that's not a mistake. It's kind of by design. This is List Shifter does things a different way. Um, in the List Shifter case, we actually run this action called Process List which is very much like list math, except it's way more configurable. Um, and what it does is it, it actually creates a new list. It like does the math from scratch and like spits that list out to this thing called the process list, um, which is sort of like the utility list math one through five outputs in floppy. But it's a lot easier to grok in floppy because I can just use that change item uh, action to, you know, just target a specific item in the list and just change it. And then that, that value automatically comes back to bubble for me. So it's very cool. It's very powerful. There's a lot of other stuff we can do, but I have to get ready for dinner. So I'm going to leave you with that. Let's see. Did I really get to all my topics? No, I did. I only glossed over add empty values. I have another demo I'm going to do for you that, um, kind of talks about empty values and like how that's cool. Um, and then, oh, we didn't get to expression watcher, but you might have noticed in this page, like, I don't know if it'll show up in the video, but like right around here, whenever I change these quantities, there's a little alert that flashes. And that little alert is just telling me that another one of my plugins that's now part of floppy called floppy expression watcher is doing its thing. And we'll talk about what expression watcher is. Um, spoiler alert, if you're familiar with list shifter, uh, you know that, um, one of the things that list shifter does is it has a um it has like an input list and also an input scalar and whenever the values in that list change like list shifter reinitializes right so list shifter represents like a live query to your database if it's holding a search 
or it's kind of like a um uh, or it's like an automatically updated value if you're using the scalar and like in the scalar you're computing you know input one plus input two um and so what happens is is list shifter will reset it will update and it'll throw its initialized slash updated event um but it also does like a lot of other stuff what expression watcher does is it has a very similar front end interface um but it really it's just for like keeping tabs on an expression and being like did this expression change and whenever the expression changes it throws an event it throws its initialized event and so it's a really cool way actually of just knowing if something changed um we didn't use that in this like kind of bogus fucked up story example um but i was just testing it out and uh, we'll talk about some of the ways you might use that it's much lighter weight than list shifter so like you know i would you you might have seen other videos with me where i like dropped a list shifter on the page and like all i was using it for was just to be like tell me that you know some expression had changed right and like get that new value um expression watcher is like that but it doesn't have all the shift features so it's like super tiny it's like 1k or something um but it can also spit those values out to its output so you can use it for a live query as well um it's basically like i'm taking little bits of list shifter and i'm breaking them out uh into uh, plugins and there may be other things like that that show up here in floppy and future versions there i said i wasn't going to talk about expression watcher but i just did uh, we'll do some examples on it later. I hope you are well. I'm feeling tired because I got my Omicron booster yesterday, like the new bivalent booster. And these always like, like I am very pro vaccine, um, but I get fatigued. And so my brain is really tired and my body is tired. And so I'm going to go have a cheeseburger. Um, have a good one and we'll talk to you soon.